Greetings from EMD News and Heart Care Foundation of India. Welcome to our show, Chat with Dr. K.K. We're going to have a chat with Professor Dr. S.C. Manchanda, who was formerly the head of the Department of Cardiology at Olney Institute of Medical Sciences, and currently he's a senior uh, cardiologist uh, at Gangaram Hospital, Delhi. Welcome to our show. Thank you. All your life you have been talking about prevention, prevention, prevention. You have done lots of uh, programs where you have shown that it is possible to regress coronary artery disease without drugs. That means with your yogic lifestyle, uh, lifestyle management. And in that you advocate a lot about uh, drugs. So today our focus will be uh, which are the uh, components of the diet which can help in regressing heart disease. We'll take one by one. Sure. Say, the first is you always say that don't take milk. If you have to take, take soya milk. You advocate soya milk is better than the that's, conventional milk. That's true. So what are the uh, advantages of soya milk? The advantages of soya milk is that uh, firstly there is no uh, allergy to this. There are some... Uh, so there's no allergy, no there, lactose? Yeah, there, there's no lactose, there's no lactose intolerance. And cholesterol Secondly, free. it has zero cholesterol in it. Okay. The cow's milk has cholesterol. Cholesterol is found only in the uh, animal. animal products and one of them is milk. The third thing is that it has a, a cholesterol lowering property also. And fourthly, people uh, get enough protein in it. It is one of the uh, richest so products. If I have to take a soya protein, yes. no, no, no sugar should be added? Yes. And can I make a soya tea? Uh, normally we say normal tea with sugar is, advantages may be lost. But in soya milk, if you add so-called black tea or a green tea, will yes. it make a difference? Usually, no it, usually it is not done. Uh, usually used with the uh, tea, it is uh, taken as milk. You can make uh, Indians, for example, they can make curd out of it. They can make um, charge so out for, of for it. For making a curd out of soya, yes, I just put the same. Yes, bacteria. You, you have yes, you have to put the same bacteria, small amount of bacteria. And same yes. with the conventional uh, yes. dahi curd, we can put it yes. and convert it into it. Convert, we can convert it into a paneer also. Yeah, you can. Yes, it is called tofu. Tofu. Actually, so tofu, tofu is available commercially also. Tofu is a, a paneer made out of soya only. So soya can be taken in various ways. So like apart in, from apart from lowering cholesterol, it is said that it is also good for amenopausal women. Yes, there are uh, several other advantages. It has been shown that it is very good for osteoporosis it has some studies are there that it may prevent diabetes and hypertension also okay. Apart and from there are some studies that it may even be useful in uh, uh, countering cancer because the cancer is very low in japanese in spite of the fact they smoke you also advocate a lot about black gram yes chana yes and what are the advantages of that again black gram is very rich in fiber it has been shown uh, any uh, food which is very rich in uh, fiber lowers cholesterol there are uh, evidence based studies that uh, black gram taken can lower cholesterol so it should also be taken in plenty it's useful again high fibers are useful both for diabetes hypertension and heart disease and what we advocate is that uh, black gram can be taken in various forms the best form like soya is you can put in the chapatis okay. so you can put 80% uh, of the wheat flour and the 10 10% can be uh, soya, 10% can be chana. Chana can be taken as snacks uh, with tea, etc. And all. Chana can be taken as vegetables, it can be taken as chaat. So there are several ways one can take chana, just like soya can be taken in many ways. What about isabgol? Isabgol is again a pure fiber. It has, we have also done studies, there are several other studies that it lowers cholesterol significantly because it's a pure fiber. It should be taken before meals with a lot of water. Half an hour before yeah, meals. Yeah, half an hour it with a with lot of water. Yes, it will give you a filling effect and whatever, uh, you see, uh, fat we are taking, it uh, absorbs it and then throws it out uh, uh, via the fecal route. It's also very so useful, as you know, for constipation. The newer drugs like lipase inhibitors, yes. can they be used as a cheating drugs? No, they cannot be. Cheating drugs? No. Means once in a while you want to cheat and take a heavy fatty meal. Oh yes. No, 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 no. Once in a while I think everything is allowed. What we are saying is we are not uh, machines. We cannot take the same food all the time. But most of the time if we take healthy food, once in a while if we take unhealthy, it doesn't really matter. The new food pyramid says 50% of your diet should be fruits and vegetables. Yes. I would agree. You see that uh, fruits and vegetables are complex carbohydrates, most of them. They have... Uh, uh, very low glycemic index and it is recommended that one should take low glycemic index and whole grains that is refined things should be avoided what we found is that uh, the four things are refined and both have uh, all four things have harm for example 
the wheat has been refined made into so white uh, maida uh, white maida it has made into white bread white okay. since the time white bread has come it is a very high glycemic index it has possibly caused diabetes so many endocrine white rice yes the second thing which has been refined is the rice so, so you should take brown rice even diabetics can take brown rice but you should not take that polished rice the third thing which has been refined is good which has been jaggery which has been made into so jaggery is good, good because it has a lot of uh, uh, vitamins in it it's a complex carbohydrate it has fiber in it it is not harmful but uh, the refined jaggery is bad so jaggery is better than, uh, than than brown sugar brown sugar is better than oh, sure. white sugar yes. and the fourth one is uh, the fourth one is the oil has been refined because refining really spoils the oil if you see the refining process they have to heat it at about 280 degrees the moment you heat the oil 280 all the good products are uh, so uh, if removed you to, if you have to use one oil which one will you use if you have to use a combination what uh, i would use uh, uh, mustard oil the scientific evidence because it is the highest omega 3 uh, fatty acid in it the but, other but there was a statement by one of the cardiologists that if you use mustard oil in excess i'm not talking but if you use in moderation it is good if you use it in excess there are animal studies that it is harmful you see excess means excess we are more than 50 ml in no, a, no, more than 15 ml in no, a day no that's not true you see we uh, advise that people should take uh, about 30% calories from fat right and uh, some of 10% are any of hidden calories from the fat mm-hmm. so maximum one requires is 340 teaspoonful excess of anything that's is 15 ml that's yeah, 15 ml that's uh, that's quite good enough but yes. there are studies to show that only in rats it could be harmful uric acid which is present a uh, subsequent studies done in monkeys by national institute of nutrition and icmr have shown that it is not harmful for humans in even in the maximum dosage is used which humans use so they say that a, a blend of oil is better than a single oil yes because many people do not really like the smell of uh, mustard all the time and if then, you, then yeah. you can use a combination the other best oil which has omega 3 poor man's, poor man's uh, uh, is soybean oil so, yeah soybean yeah no or yes olive. yes i think poor man's uh, uh, oil is mustard oil because it's the cheapest no, no. Uh, 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 rich man poor man's oil is mustard yes and the same with an advantage in a rich man oil is rich man oil is canola oil canola, canola is a rapeseed oil it's much better than so, uh, than the olive oil olive oil doesn't have omega 3 is the n3 n6 ratio is important omega 3 is very very important we know it has a lot of health benefits olive oil unfortunately it's advertised i know a lot but it okay. is what canola about, is much better what about a clove of garlic a day a garlic is extremely good all these uh, garlic and onions have been shown to have reducing cholesterol effect especially the triglycerides and all that anything else in the diet yeah. you see there are uh, three things in the diet which are important one of them you already talked about the uh, about the fat which we get from the oil one uh, oil should be completely banned i think that is called which has trans fats the hydrogenated oils they have been considered poison for the heart so trans fats we should have zero should be zero yes that is completely true saturated fats should be minimal less than 10% people say 5% and we should have high oils uh, oils containing high omega 3 polyunsaturated the second thing is fruits and vegetables indians take very little and if we take fruits and vegetables it will be completely extremely useful then we should take whole grains fourthly we should completely uh, avoid uh, refined foods and uh, okay. i think we can avoid many diseases not only heart disease but diabetes and you in hypothesis and this is based on one of my observation a small observation study that today number one cause of heart disease is metabolic syndrome the basic component of metabolic syndrome <laughs> is hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance insulin resistance is linked to refined carbohydrates and carbohydrates in our methodology it is very clearly mentioned that one should fast 80 days in a year one fast every week one fast extra in a month and two navratras of 9 9 days each and that would amount to around 80 fasts in a year fasting methodology basically means not eating cereals was that preventing metabolic syndrome yes at that era Uh, that is true you see this fasting not much data is there but whatever data is available it shows that it uh, puts the body into balance because we are human beings we err at times we do not take at times so this fasting cleans your system quite there's some That's scientific the fasting yeah. i'm only talking about not uh, eating uh, carbohydrates say once in a week yes yes i'm uh, talking about f- carbohydrate fast as i said if you take whole grains as we were taking it earlier they do they are not they are low glycemic index they do not cause metabolic syndrome it is the refined carbohydrates which cause if we are taking refined i think we should fast more often because the refined carbohydrates are pretty bad and they cause metabolic syndrome okay let me come back to other than prevention uh, uh, my first question is that do you follow what you preach 100%. don't smoke no alcohol yes, and, and, and soya bean yes, and other yes. things 
Uh, it's absolute. I follow exactly absolutely. the same. Absolutely. I do if yoga you also not, every day. If you know, if you would not have been a doctor, what you would have been? <laughs> I would have been a good human being. I don't think. Uh, Did you say uh, that? that is, yeah, that side. A good human being is one who can be useful for others. Whatever my profession was, if I can help somebody who is not well off, uh, so this is what I say: good human being. Okay, if the Prime Minister of India calls you yes. and make you the Health Minister for a day, yes. what policy change you will like? Well, <laughs> with full powers. Yes, uh, what uh, I would like to do is, you see, they are, we are having an epidemic of so-called lifestyle related diseases. And there are only four things responsible for it. Uh, one is diet, the other is lack of exercise, the third is uh, stress and the fourth is smoking. So I'll completely ban smoking first, that's very easy. Secondly, I will subsidize the fruits and vegetables and I will completely ban trans fats. I'll put a warning like in cigarettes that these are harmful for the heart. So once you're banning, there's no labeling is required? Yes. <laughs> okay. No, if, uh, the third thing, I will encourage uh, to have these, uh, uh, you know, uh, walking tracks in the city. I would like to maintain the parks because one of the reasons why people are not walking in many of these cities is so because there are no parks and no walking track. I'll make s cycling tracks almost compulsory. I will encourage people to come on cycles. Uh, this is done in many countries and uh, rather than uh, and cycle lanes like in Japan or other places, I'll see that they are mandatory rather than having so many cars and all. I'll encourage people to use exercise. And, and thirdly, to reduce stress. I will try them, uh, to encourage them to do some uh, stress Make relieving methods like yoga. Schools. Yeah, not compulsory, optional. optional. But this is one of the methods of relieving yoga, uh, of uh, uh, stress management. Because stress is a very important factor, completely neglected. My last thing is that uh, nowadays we talk about hands only CPR. Yes. To revive a person, mouth to mouth breathing is not required. And you can uh, train people. Do you feel that every relation of a heart patient must be, must be taught? Hands only CPR. So that in subdic casualty happens at home. Specifically those people who are at high risk of sudden death, their family members. Yeah. It should be a part of the treatment to teach them oh, yes. how to revive a person. I have been doing it for the last 20, 30 years. Like you are involved in CPR. I've been involved for a long time. All the relatives, especially the school children. But I believe every good Samaritan uh, or every good citizen, even a school child must know CPR. Because accidents or cardiac arrest occurs at a place most unexpected. They can occur at airports, may not occur in the house itself. Most of the heart attacks occur outside the house. So I think every citizen should be trained, like you are training school children. It do, they rec don't require much. We have also been involved and in, once they learn the CPR, they do better than even the doctors and all. So every good citizen should be taught. So it should be made compulsory and this awareness should be there that an uh, ordinary human being can save a dying person. He, he is much more important than the doctors who are trained for such a long time. And th they have the potentiality. Hands-on CPR has become very, very easy. Earlier it used to be mouth to mouth, that is not needed. It is as effective. So I think what you are doing is uh, very, very laudable. And everybody, I think, should follow your example. I was quoting yesterday also in sudden cardiac death, India has a lot of problems. But uh, one of the problems can be solved if uh, most of the citizens are taught in the CPR. With the CPR, if you can add so-called the automatic defibrillators, uh, which should be uh, available in all crowded places. It's uh, already happening in supermarkets or whenever there's a big uh, collection of people. There should be an automatic defibrillator because CPR, yes, can save lives. But after seven or eight minutes, if you can, or ten minutes, if you can do a defibrillation, then the person is certainly going to live. So what Dr. Manchanda says is that prevention is the basic answer. And uh, not only the patient's relations, every citizen in the country should learn the process of CPR. Let's thank our guest to be in our show. And that's all for today. We'll come back with one more topic. Till that, goodbye. Thank you.